Oh, this is something I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about tank design because I've, I've learned a few new things. So when you each go up one level of tank, not only does it get more expensive, obviously, but not only does it get more armor. So 28 armor, 44 armor, 60 armor. Not only does the armor cost go up, but the also reliability goes up too. It's a, it's a hidden number. It's a hidden number. They, they really should say what the starting reliability is for this chassis. So this chassis should be 100. This should be 120. This should be 150. But it doesn't actually say that. It's really confusing. So the idea is the more advanced tank chassis you've got, the more stuff you can put on it, more bigger engine, more armor, because it has higher reliability. You ideally, in a perfect world, want to aim for 80, 90% reliability. And obviously you add more engine on and armor and it makes the reliability come down. So you could upgrade this tank actually for four XP and gain more armor. Got a tiny amount. Extra breakthrough, that's good. So when you go for the higher level chassis, they have a higher level reliability so you can put more stuff on them so you'll basically find that the, the first tank that you make more than likely be one of these three chassis will be pretty like naked because you won't be able to load too much stuff onto it and you don't really want the production cost to go above like 15 for a heavy or 10 for a medium or i don't know eight for a, a light for instance because you you need to be able to pump them out in mass the way i see it this is my philosophy on this is you make your first 25 width tank division you make one with crap tanks decent armor fairly slow not very good okay so the last two videos are made about supply meta as well as combat with meta i'll admit as the meta is you never really fully understand the meta until some time has passed i want to let you know right now the information I'm giving you is probably the sketchiest of all the information I've ever given because I personally think this is going to vastly change as time moves on. So I personally think the most cost effective tank possible is a medium basic chassis with a boggy, boggy suspension because it's cheap with riveted armor because it's cheap with a diesel engine because it's reliable and then the small armament close support gun. So. The way to think about this is this is very, a very short barreled gun that fires like an explosive shell. It's almost like a, I guess the way you could describe it is because it's so low velocity and so low uh, stopping power. It's almost like a grenade launcher almost. A very, very short, a shotgun tank, kind of, but the shells are explosive. The beauty of this barrel on a tank is it has 25 soft attacks. So this tank is going to chew through infantry do a really good job not so good against armor targets and not very much piercing but you get you gotta work with what you've got anyway so it's a small armament bogey suspension bogey diesel engine and then we go for a small armament and the close support so you can see compared to all the other small guns it has lots and lots of soft attack it basically is an spg gun really basically it's kind of like a very small narrow howitzer anyway and you also want to go for a light turret because it's cheap and also you want to keep the turret cheap as well don't go for fixed uh, superstructure that's just for artilleries and spgs and tank destroyers um, and once again you get lots of breakthrough for going for a multi-man turret but it, once again it's a bit expensive so you want to keep it on a budget and now you want to keep this get the speed up by adding all armor on which gives extra breakthrough which is new news to me and then if it's below the speed of four kilometers per hour you can't save it so you add extra engines to just make it four kilometers per hour so what you've got basically is the british equivalent of an infantry tank a slow heavily armored support tank that moves with infantry uh this is not <laughs> this is not how the germans design tanks what about a radio radios are expensive bro and you want to keep the price down so basically this is it this is it the production cost is very low so you can pump these babies out in numbers but don't forget guys this is quite a heavily armored tank so the main reasons you make tanks is for two reasons one you want the armor Armor means you get that extra bonus in combat when fighting things that can't pierce it. Meaning you get a bonus to how much organization damage the enemy gets. So you can break them quicker. You want to break them quick. That's the purpose of a tank. You want breakthrough. Breakthrough basically is armor on the offensive. Meaning you can uh, ignore a certain amount of firepower that comes your way. Because that's a tank. You're an offensive vehicle. That's the way it is. And of course a bit of soft attack goes a long way too. Because you obviously want to deal damage to infantry that's going to be fighting. This is where I'm going with this silver. Just, just bear with me because we're not done yet. We're not done yet. The idea is, is you, you've made your tank division now 
once again, it's not state of the art. It's very slow, and it, and it uh, it's basically just to make large numbers of tanks so you can make yourself your first tank division. What will happen over time is you will start to upgrade more parts in this tank. So this is the mentality of this. So right now you're probably thinking this is a tank that's slow, so you don't have the benefits of like speed and shit. So it's like, man, what's the point of this tank, Dave? It's stupid. By the way, something to tell, let you know about as well, a hidden mechanic is that whenever a, a division is faster than four kilometers per hour, it gains a bonus to reinforce rate. Reinforce rate is the number that allows you to get into combat quicker. It's the one, the reason why you research the first radio because it gives you reinforce rate plus 5%. Is this what the British did? Yes, they did. This was kind of before the doctrine of tanks existed of what, what was the purpose of tanks on the battlefield. And the British French understanding of tanks on the battlefield is it was a support vehicle that would aid in the infantry offensive where like the Soviets had a different idea where tanks were an independent brigade a unit that would fight independently and do everything uh, by themselves which also had disastrous consequences as well because the tanks didn't have good visibility all the way around them and good communication due to radios so therefore they could be ambushed really easily so it's funny that the tank doctrine with the modern tank doctrine was a combination of the two the independent tank on its own that could do everything or the tank that basically was fully supported with infantry it was like a mixture of both combination of a motorized fast tank with motorized infantry whoa what the germans did wow how did they figure it out wow so where do we go from here so once you produce a lot of these and got really high production efficiency you basically will have enough divisions in like 1937 to actually have one or two divisions of this so you got 25 combat width so that's the combat width we talked about earlier that fits into everything so there's a good 25 combat width division so you're supposed to do any dedicated tank divisions. But the disadvantage of a slow tank that's an infantry tank is that you just don't get the ability to break through and encircle as efficiently because it's slow. What's the optimal combat width for infantry? Once again, hotly contested, but at the moment, it looks to me a, a, a universal infantry template that would fit into L terrain types, which is roughly around 25. I say roughly because the, the initial number of terrain combat width doesn't fit into 25, but every reinforce rate will fit somehow into 25 to a certain degree ideally in a perfect world what you would do is create a 25 combat worth infantry division exercise it to level three and then convert it over that way you can retain as much xp as possible without exercising and blowing your own tanks the narrowest combat width for reinforce rate is 25 for a mountain so you basically make a division that can fit divisibly into 25 at the smallest possible amount is it foolproof no but once again, it's just it works with with the numbers that we're working with at the minute. Because the worst scenario is where you have an infantry division that's sat in reserve and it can't fight because it's stuck in reserve. But at least if you push a division from reserve into attack, at least in those circumstances it will be fighting, even though it might suffer from a penalty being over the combat width. Anyway, this allows you to make an actual tank division. So the difference with this, in this and the old way of thinking. Uh, is the old way of thinking is you'd make seven twos and you'd just be like, well, I'm making seven twos, I'm fine now. Frontline full of seven twos, easy, just attack battle plan, blah, blah, blah. Well, at least with this, you are actually making a tank that you can actually use on the front line. So at least in that mind, you've actually got tanks usable in the early stage of the game. Anyway, so as you start to research more and more different things, uh, you can start to introduce no new parts to your tank. The easiest thing to do is to add a big howitzer to the tank. Once again, we're talking about single player here, guys. So I think the most optimal tank build is going to be one that has lots of soft attack. So in this case, as you start to work down the path of artillery, you can work towards a tank uh, that will have a bigger gun on the front. So in this case, we can have a... I guess you'd have to go for a me medium armament, wouldn't you? Yeah, a medium howitzer. Be aware that when you're starting to add on howitzers, not only are you going to get a drop in reliability and speed... But you're also going to request, request you're going to need tungsten and chromium for this tank. So we'll call this the V2. So you can see the difference is 11.2 is the production cost. And now 25 soft attack from 12.8 to 35. But now we've got an actual howitzer on the front of the tank. Be aware though, this has got a reduction amount of uh, hard attack it can de demonstrate too. Hard attack is 5 and the hard attack's now gone down to 2. Because this is basically a, a, a long range... Um, shot that can be fired at an arc and it is an explosive shell it's not a solid shot 
So now we've got a tank that has a bigger howitzer. But then to take it the next step further, we, we start to consider uh, upgrading our turret to one with a three man. This is giving us a massive breakthrough bonus as well. Got a massive amount of breakthrough, almost doubling our breakthrough. But then in this case, we have to up the engine to get four kilometers per hour. So now we have the V3. So that, as you can see, as time goes on, you start to upgrade parts and parts of the tank. So now we've gone from a tank that cost over 11.2 to 14.9 with the howitzer on it. To go for a heavy howitzer though, you need a fixed superstructure. And you have to state that it's an SPG now and not a tank. But now we're getting like loss of soft attack. Oh wow, loads of piercing too. Wow, the heavy the heavy howitzer has good piercing. I wouldn't have thought. But then you're losing loads of breakthrough as well because of the fixed infrastructure. But the truth is you want to get the biggest possible howitzer on the tank whilst having uh, a three-man turret for the most breakthrough. The optimal armor amount, it depends on the area you're going to be fighting, I guess. The, the more the game progresses and the longer it goes on for, the more advanced anti-tank weapons are going to exist. Yeah, true, you can go for welded, welded armor as well. Uh, but then obviously the production cost is going to go up massively as well. So go research all show. So then obviously as time progresses, you're going to start adding on more parts. In this case, you would go for welded armor because it gives way more armor. Wow, way, way more armor. If price is no object, though, you could go for cast armor, but God, the price is so expensive. 20% production cost increase. Welded armor. Torsion bar is a really easy way of getting extra reliability. I guess Christie suspension is pretty good too, if you want to go for the speed as well. To be honest with you at the moment, the way supply currently works in the game, I feel like fast tanks don't really help you that much. I, don't get me wrong, if you want to role play the game and you want to like, I want speedy fast tanks today, I want little jet engines in my tanks, I want them to be so fast. Just do it. Honestly, just be, be my guest. I'm t when I talk about stats of tanks, I'm talking about min-maxing purposes. So if if I don't, if I'm not compatible with how you want to play the game, well, just play the way you enjoy, okay? But at this point now, because this tank is uh, such an old chassis, the reliability is too low. So at this point, we need to go into the more advanced uh, chassis. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I, I might be biased because you guys might look really like nice little speedy little Ferrari tanks. The truth is, I, I personally don't think fast tanks are actually that useful with the current supply system. Because the truth is, the deeper you get into front line, which speed gives you that benefit, uh, the more likely you run into supply issues. So it's like it's kind of it feels like it defeats the purpose. Uh, and also another way of making the armor go an extra mile is sloped armor as well. Sloped armor is just big. An advanced radio because it gives a big boost to the amount of stats for breakthrough. It, once again, I personally feel like it's better to play reactive. So whenever you're in a situation where your tanks start to get pierced, at that point you're like, oh, well, in that case I need to improve my tanks. And what you could do is, for instance, add on welded armor. Then you could add on uh, sloped armor. Then you could increase the armor stat on the tank itself as well. You know, there's like lots of little things and adjustments you can actually make. But of course, at this point, because because that tank chassis is so, so out of date, you're going to have to go for an advanced medium chassis to keep the reliability up. This is a very slow infantry tank, but it has lots of fighting capabilities. I've noticed when the breakthrough of the tank gets really high, the soft attack doesn't even matter. But I don't think you have the ability to get access to a really high breakthrough until later in the game when you've got all the technologies for it. So you're constantly playing a battle between uh, what you're capable of doing. I think it's still good to make a dedicated SPG tank destroyer for your tank. Do you know what? I think no, because you now have the ability to customize a tank, whether you want it to have more hard attack, more armor, more hardness. You can customize that tank however you please to get the stats to you that you want. So it makes me believe that SPGs and tank destroyers and maybe even AA tanks are redundant now. You can make tanks that specifically fit those roles. I don't know. I'm on the fence with that one. Come back to me in six months. <laughs> Anyway, that pretty much goes into my little explanation on tanks. Once again, if you want to role play and make fast tanks, be my guess. If you want to role play and make really big fort tanks that are really slow, be my guess. But when I'm talking about tank stats, I'm specifically talking about the min-maxing and how to get the most out of the stats for the tank itself. In this case, I've gone for very high soft attack, hence the reason why I'm going to be fighting against infantry and therefore doing what I need to do.